Mary Todd, like Lincoln, was born in Kentucky. But her sometimes outspoken Southern sympathies made her rather unpopular as a first lady. She was also rather deeply affected by the deaths of her sons, Tad and Willie, as very young boys. There is a cover in the exhibit that reminds me of a story I want to share with you about her. There was a large dinner being held with her maid. There was a room at the White House. And receiving line, and she's shaking hands with everyone. And then she gives her maid her white silk gloves. The maid gives her a fresh set to put on for dinner. She goes to dinner. In the middle of dinner, oh my lord, she gets a gravy stain on a finger. So she calls her maid over and sends her up for another pair of gloves. Lincoln rose angrily, and in a rare display of public anger, recorded by a New York Herald editor who happened to be invited to the dinner, Lincoln turns to her and says, Madam, this nation is engaged in a great war whose cost in lives and funds has hurt us very deeply. Your frippery with gloves has an expense that this nation and this president will not tolerate. <laughs> the cover in the exhibit is one in which she sent her personal check from her personal front funds to Fuller Brothers of New York for 48 pairs of white silk gloves. <laughs> Just after Lincoln's election, the southern states start seceding from the Union. First there were seven, as shown on this early version with a flag, and later 11 formed the Confederate States of America. On April 12, 1861, five weeks after Lincoln's inauguration, Confederate troops attacked and captured Fort Sumter, South Carolina, beginning the Civil War. While it's clothed in the language of the rights of states to set their own laws and economics, it was really slavery and the fear of its abolition that was the basic cause of the South starting the Civil War. The Confederate States of America elected Jefferson Davis their president. Remember what I said earlier about, about images and getting them out to people? So this patriotic envelope and this stamp bore the image of Jefferson Davis. And that was to promote his image as president in the Confederacy. There was a shortage of metals in the Union to make coins because so many had been taken in for war supplies. For a while, small change was made by printing stamp currency in low values up to the 50 cent. We should remember that at this time, 50 cents was a day's wage for many laborers. This cover shows Lincoln's free frank. That's where one can send a letter just by signing his or her name. And it was on April 21, 1863, to General Sanford. He was commanding the New York City garrison. The letter provided Stanford, Sanford with instructions on how to handle the mail seized from ships that were caught trying to evade the blockade. Now that blockade of the East Coast was led by the Southern Atlantic Squadron commanded by Admiral Richard Lee. Ironically, stopping the supplies from reaching his brother, Confederate States Commander Robert E. Lee. They were on opposite sides. Oh, this is a favorite, Lincoln Medicine. Lincoln is shown as mixing medicines to cure the Union's ills and attack the rebels. And Two of the signs read, Lincoln's renowned rebel exterminator, warranted not to spoil in warm climates. 
The other one I like right down at the bottom is Pure Refined National Elixir of Liberty. The postmaster of Gouverneur, New York, an upstate town, hand carved an image of Old Abe on wood to cancel the stamps on his town's mail. Union spirit was shown in many different patriotic covers, and, and they sought to inspire people to keep their Union spirit high. It could hardly go any higher than the one showing Lincoln as the Comet of the North. The Magnus Company prepared many covers featuring Lincoln, coupled with his often underperforming generals in the East. Here's General Halleck. They also did Generals Scott, McClellan, and Fremont, none of whom was aggressive enough against the Confederates as Sherman and Sheridan were later. In fact, Lincoln once said, if General McClellan is not presently using the Army of the Potomac, I have a use for them. <laughs> However, in the West, a young general mounted a successful land and river campaign from St. Louis South and New Orleans North along the Mississippi, and he won a stunning victory at Shiloh, Shiloh, Tennessee. General Grant successfully split the Confederacy, controlled the river, and while the Gulf of Mexico was blockaded, this had the effect of cutting access to any foreign supplies and materials, and it isolated Texas, Louisiana, and Arkansas from the rest of the Confederacy. Lincoln thought about it, realized he had a good one, and he put Grant in charge of the entire army. <laughs>